This is the eagle, and at its core, it's the Mark II eagle. But it's not. I, I mean it's an eagle, but it's not the eagle Mark II. This is the Imperial Eagle, which is brought to you by the Empire's favourite manufacturer, Gutemeyer, based on a ship made by Core Dynamics, the Federation's preferred supplier of ships. Some people believe that Federal engineers assisted Gutemeyer in bringing this ship to life, and if true, it shows that money can buy loyalty. Either that, or there's a single galactic order in the galaxy puppeteering all the various factions into working towards a single means. After all, war does bring about innovation, and with the ongoing threat to humanity, we really do need to pursue a technical edge over our would-be extinguishers. Of course, all the stuff that I just said is a wild conspiracy theory. Just to reiterate, the Imperial Eagle is a result of reverse engineering and stolen blueprints. Nothing more, and nothing less. Moving on swiftly. The Imperial Eagle looks like an eagle, but it looks like an eagle that was elected prom queen and has got all dressed up for the occasion. It's been cleaned up, given a fresh paint job with some blue inlaid lighting to give its body line some definition. It's also had a little bit of cosmetic surgery with the addition of some new wingtip nacelles and a spoiler on the back. This does mean it has a larger hit profile than the regular Eagle Mark II, but the differences are so small it's barely worth taking into consideration. In fact, they're so small I'm not entirely sure why I'm even mentioning it. The interior is largely similar too, although it's been facelifted with Gutemeyer's signature style and has a more premium looking and feeling edge over the Mark II. So, what did the Imperial engineers keep? Aside from the basic shape, the Imperial Eagle has the same number of optional compartments and utility mounts. Most of the core internals are also the same with the main notable differences being the ability to support a larger power plant and also that central class 1 hardpoint slot has been replaced with a class 2, which gives you a little bit of an edge as far as raw damage output goes. This does mean that you can sling a plasma accelerator onto your build if that's where the mood takes you. The Imperial Eagle largely improves upon the Mark II Eagle in a number of other aspects too. The shields and armour are stronger, the speed is faster, and the boost punches in with more force. The boost has a sound that can only be described as the foot of God being shoved up the backside of the ship with great force as an encouragement to go faster before it scurries off into the distance. In fact, I'll go as far as to say that out of all of the ships, the Imperial Eagle has my favourite boost sound. There is a cost associated with these improvements though. Not only does the Imperial variant cost over twice the amount of the Mark II, but it also suffers with agility. Don't get me wrong, it's still an agile ship with manoeuvrability stats on par with the Adder, but if you're flying in a canyon, the Mark II is a better choice. Agility isn't everything though. With a stripped down build, this ship can be made to run insanely fast with some commanders squeezing in excess of 900 meters per second out of it. To put that into perspective, the Mamba is based off a racing prototype and won't get anywhere near those figures. In fact, as far as I'm aware, the only ship that can keep up is the Viper Mark III. Although, to get anywhere near those speeds involves putting the ship on a strict diet, equipping performance enhanced thrusters and engineering it heavily, to the point that it isn't much use for anything apart from flying fast. If you're planning on combat in this ship though, you can still get enough speed out of it to outrun most ships with a combat build, making it ideal for striking as hard as you can then boosting out to give your shields a chance to come back up. Although if that isn't for you, despite having less agility than the Mark II, it's still more than suited to sitting in the blind spot of larger ships and chipping away at them. Even though the Imperial Eagle has better weaponry than the Mark II, attacking a larger ship is still more akin to chipping away at it with a spork rather than a knife. Never underestimate the mighty spork though. It's not all good though. The power distributor feels a bit weedy once you fill the class 2 hardpoint, and as with the Mark II, the Imperial Eagle can suffer with heat issues, although the heat issues are easily mitigated if you build the ship to take that into account. Think thermal vent on any beams and consider a low emission power plant or at least applying the thermal spread effect to it. 
as for everything else, it's pretty much in the same ballpark as the Mark II for everything else. Trading and mining are best left to the other ships with bigger holds and as for exploration, the range isn't amazing and the fuel tank might leave you wanting something that's a bit larger and more suited to the task. Although as I've said before many times, you can explore in anything, it'll just take you a bit longer to get away from the bubble than those ships that have a larger jump range. One other thing, unlike other ships made by Gutemeyer and despite the name, you won't need to sell your soul to the Empire in order to purchase this ship. You can just rock up to a vendor that sells it, grab it from one of the hangars and hand over your credits. I could swear that this ship used to have an entry requirement in previous years, possibly the outsider rank of the Imperial Navy, but either I'm remembering things that didn't happen or in later years the Empire changed things to allow this ship to be purchased by anyone. If that's the case, then I can only assume that this would have been done to make the Imperial Eagle the gateway drug to all things Gutemeyer and Imperial, just giving enough of a taste to make you pledge your allegiance to the Empire and rank up, just to sample the other delights that Gutemeyer has to offer. So should you buy the Imperial Eagle? In conclusion, it's not a bad ship for what it is. Yes, you could argue that the price is over twice that of the regular Eagle Mark II and as such you might as well get that instead despite the relative shortcomings of the Mark II, but the shields, armour and available weapons really are a cut above the Mark II. The changes both inside and out give the Imperial Eagle a premium look and feel, although that being said if you're a die-hard Federation supporter then you probably wouldn't be seen dead flying the ship, instead preferring the Mark II. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on the Imperial Eagle and if you could like, subscribe, comment, share. All of that, it would greatly help the channel. Aside from that, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you on the next video. 07 to 1 and all.